Hi guys, my name is Kirsty and welcome back to Upside Down Books and today we're going to be doing a book haul and I have some great books that I'm going to be showing you. Before we dive into the video though, I did just want to thank today's sponsor which again is Udi and I'm obviously wearing a magnificent Udi today and I am so excited about it. I'm a big fan of Disney. If you've been here for a while, you're probably aware and all over that fact. I used to work for Disney. I had a little stint in Florida once upon a time. And so yeah, any, anything with Disney on it, I get my hands on. And I love that Udi has so many different Disney Udis. I have to resist from starting a collection. This is super comfortable. I, 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 like many people, have been a big fan of Udi for a long time. I have one other Udi as well, and now I have this one to add to the collection. They're so comfortable and they're so warm, and the weather has literally just turned for like a proper cold week here in Perth. So I'm really excited to just have this to wear every morning when I get up when I just don't want to get out of bed because it's so cold and it is so snuggly and warm and it even comes with a hood which you can really just tuck yourself into. I also find the elastic hand things immensely satisfying. I feel like Severus Snape or somebody. Anyways, I have a code I can share with you guys so you can save some money when you order your own Udi product and that is KirstyBooks35. I will leave that down below as well so you can come back to that later. So make sure you head over to Udi and see all of their range and what they have to offer because it is so worth it and you know you want one so just go and use my code and do yourself a favor. Without further ado, let's get into the book haul though um, and I'm gonna start with some, with the audiobooks. I'm gonna start with audiobooks. We always forget the audiobooks. I don't think I have too many audiobooks to show you guys. If anything, I think it's just the one. Two books, I tell a lie. Okay, so I have two audiobooks to talk about. The first is Brazinga, which is the third book in the Aragon series. I cannot wait to continue this series. I've just been loving the audiobooks and loving the Aragon world. There's just something, I don't know what it is. Ar like, Aragon is so atmospheric. Like, the writing of the stories, it just really draws me in and I just, love the world and like I'm addicted to like revisiting it in my mind. I don't know what it is. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I just I've romanticized the idea of 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 you know the inheritance cycle and everything that's inside of it even though it's all like war and whatnot, but there was just something really really brilliant about book 2. So I'm really looking forward to getting even closer towards the end and catching up with the rest of the world by reading book 3. So at some point I will be continuing that journey via audiobook and I'm looking forward to it. It's a nice like chunky audiobook. It's at just shy of 30 hours. So in comparison to Outliner, I still still say that nothing is long unless it's Outlander, but 30 hours is honestly a pretty decent audiobook as well, so that will take me a good little while to get through. The other audiobook I have to tell you about is Love Stories by Trent Dalton. Now, I haven't read anything by Dalton, Dalton? I don't know how to say his name before, um, but this is the free pick of the month um, from Audible, so I am looking forward to exploring it, you know, in a sort of no strings attached sort of way. I believe this is non-fiction. I'm not entirely sure what it's about, but I'm just sort of there to dip my toe in the water and get a taste for what his writing is like. So I'm looking forward to reading that at some point. It's really short. It's only nine hours, so it's nothing too hefty, just a little bit of light reading, I'm hoping. Um, and I will see if that sort of leads me down a path of other Trent Dalton books or, or not. The next books I want to show you are some picture books that I've had for review. Both of these were like more on the serious side and I wasn't quite expecting it but I still thought they were quite valuable in their own ways. So the first one is The Echidna Near My Place which is by Sue Whiting and illustrated by Kate James. This one is probably self-explanatory. It's about an echidna. It follows a little girl and her grandmother as they're going for a walk and oh those lovely end papers. And so they're going for a walk and they're, they're trailing this echidna along and they're going on an adventure. But I did find, I rated this one three out of five stars, just because as much as I enjoyed the narrative, which is in like the big font up here, there's then like these little sections of like information text, like here as well. It just like made the story go on for too long. It was exhausting. I am an adult and I actually had to read this in two sittings. How's that for a confession? But it is already quite a long narrative um, just within the story itself. So then to have the extra text as well just honestly felt like a bit much. I know that you can honestly just read the story um, and you know do the information another time. So I think it has value in that way. And that is what these books are intended as. This is part of a uh, broader series. So it is an educational book and I think for the right purposes this is brilliant and this is a really great way to learn about echidnas. I learned stuff about echidnas in this, um, but as a story I just found it like a touch too long. Even the narrative itself was quite long and it was just exhausting. So if your child or whoever you are reading to has 
a long attention span and a thirst for knowledge, then this would be the book for you. So thank you to Walker Books for sending me this and also for the next book. The next one is A Cerise Story by Irma Gold and Wayne Harris. This one I was expecting sort of Dumbo vibes and I got them in spades. I rated this four out of five stars and I just, yeah, this is like kind of really sad. Like, isn't that just screaming Dumbo to you? It's about awareness of animal treatment and animal welfare when it comes to things like circuses. And I think it really drives the point home. It is very sad though, and it does have a happy ending, I will say that, but if you have a particularly emotional reader that you would like to introduce this to, then just be aware that this might be a little bit too much for them. So I, I did enjoy this on the whole, and I thought that the illustrations were really beautiful, sort of, um, Almost, I want to say graphite, but not being an artist in any way, I have no idea. This sort of texture is, is really lovely, and so I did really enjoy it. So those are the picture books I wanted to share with you. I think I just have two other review copies to share with you. And the first one is The Wearing of the Green, which is by Claire Saxby. This is also from Walker Books. All of these books are from Walker Books. Now this is actually, um, I think, a middle grade book. It's so much smaller than my usual stuff, but I was really intrigued by it. It's sort of Australian historical fiction, and I've got a real, like, taste for Australian historical fiction at the moment. I just want to read more and more about it because so much history. This one is about an orphan who's come from Ireland. She's an Irish famine orphan and she arrives in Melbourne on a ship. When she arrives there she's expecting her brother to be waiting for her but he's not there and he's also her only surviving relative and the only reason she agreed to move to Australia in the first place. So she's sent out of Melbourne and away to work in a farm and it becomes far from the life she dreamed of. That is all I know of this book and I'm just excited to I'm just excited to read more books like this talking about the sort of early um, colonizers and uh, white people that were in Australia. I'm really interested to look at that sort of really dark and grungy history because there's a lot of hardships that people went through, um, particularly in terms of orphans and the whatnot. So yeah, I'm looking forward to reading this one. The next one is a similar vibe and that is Interned by Pamela Rushby. I really like the cover for this one and this one's just like a tiny bit thicker. This one's set in 1914 and the main character is the daughter of a German businessman and she's living a privileged life in Singapore. If people don't know where Singapore is, uh, for me that's like as obvious as where England is but perhaps people who don't live in Australia don't know Singapore is in Indonesia so between Australia and like mainland Asia for a geographical point of reference if you needed it though it's not a part of Indonesia it's a separate country but anyway we don't need a geography lesson I just thought I'd let you know we then have a second character who is the daughter of a German born baker and they are living in Australia but then the war breaks out so both of these characters then get cast as the enemy because they are German and so they start to have a bit of a hard time they're taken from their homes and they're put into an internment camp and I think this is something I really am excited to read about because internment camps um, that happened all over the world during this time where people got really scared and just put anyone who had relations to the enemy in internment camps. I haven't read much about. I know we had ones for Italians um, and um, obviously Germans, so I guess I, I've just really not read any stories about it and I'm excited to read about their experience, the discrimination and the injustice that they had. I think the like innocent German perspective in a different country is a really interesting take um, to, to, to have and an important one um, because it's a part of history. So yes, looking forward to reading this one and exploring the story inside of it. All of those books are already out so you can go and get yourselves a copy. Right, so the next book I want to show you, I'm going to dive in with something very exciting and it is the April Adult Book Only Fairy Loot Box. So if you're a subscriber and you've not received your copy yet, as I have only like just received mine, so you may not have, this is for the Divine Power Box. So if you have not already received yours, then skip ahead a minute or so and I'm just going to very briefly talk about the book that was in this month's subscription. I'm thrilled because the book was The City of Dusk by Tara Sim. You can see that it's got a lovely white cover. It has black sprayed edges, no stencil design on this one, and it has um, some beautifully done M papers. They're like skulls and flowers. And it has, of course, foiling on the case as well. So this is what the case looks like. It's just beautiful. It's also a lovely thick book. I have been wanting to read Tara Sim and as to the best of my knowledge, I don't think I have read unless the book I'm currently reading is by her. Yes, it is. <laughs> I knew that was the case. I was gonna say, I haven't read any Tara Sim, but I've actually been reading Timekeeper by Tara Sim by audiobook and loving it. So this author has been like back up on my radar as someone I need to get books of because I've been really aware of all of Tara Sim's books coming out over the years. And I've just sort of never ended up getting them. So I'm really excited to finally have like a physical copy of her book and love that it's super thick. So this is a really gorgeous book. The colors are inversed on the original. You can go and look it up if you want. This on the back of it 
says for each realm there is a god and for each god there is an heir. It's going to be a really great time. The realms are life, death, light and darkness and all of them converge on the city of dusk but the gods have withdrawn their favour from the city. So we've got four characters. We've got a necromancer, an elementalist, a shadow wielding rogue and a soldier who are all trying to keep things together and stop the world from falling apart. And then it says their defiance will cost them dearly. So yes, looking forward to picking this one up in the future. Very much so and just am loving the design of this. Now the next few books I want to show you, I'm, I'm just so excited that I've got them because I got them on sale. I had some vouchers to use up at the bookstore and I saw that these books were like more than 60% off. They were on a wicked sale and they are stunning. So we're gonna have a look at them now. So the first one is called Death of an Eye and it is by Dana Stabenow, Stabenov, unsure in pronunciation here. And this is, um, if you can't tell by the like hieroglyphic eye there, it is Egyptian mythology. I think it's actually being cast is Egyptian history but it's you know leading into the myth side of things. It's lovely and thin but it's just a gorgeous gorgeous book and it's hardback. It is red without its jacket on. So it's set in Alexandria 47 BC and Cleopatra is in power. There's a lot of like descent and like um, unrest going on in her realm and everyone is watching her as the young queen waiting for her to misstep and then her most trusted servant the eye has been murdered and a shipment of Kaga goes missing. So there's a lot of stuff going on and I think it's going to be an interesting sort of time watching Cleopatra rule and try and keep things together. I've never heard of this before, never heard of this author before, so I am looking forward to exploring it and seeing what it's like. And, and yeah, it's just, I'm really surprised that I haven't come across such a beautiful book before. Off the back of that, I also got another book by the same author called Silk and Song. This one's much thicker. It is three books in one and this one is set in China in AD 1322. On the back it says the death of her father forces a young woman on a long and dangerous journey to the west in search of her grandfather Marco Polo. I didn't need to read any further than that. That sounds amazing. Chinese historical fiction with Marco Polo thrown in sounds like a great time that I am so there for and cannot wait to sink my teeth into. The next book I just love the cover for and it is The Witches of St. Petersburg by Imogen Edwards-Jones. I just... Look at the sparkle on this book. It is just gorgeous. With jacket off, it is just a plain blue. And this one is a set in Russia and it is entangling itself with the story of Rasputin. I am a big fan of Russian history around this time with the fall of the Tsars and everything going on, the revolutions, all of the unrest, and of course the great story of Rasputin, which is almost mythology in its own self now. So yes, looking forward to diving into this one. I think the two main characters in this one are actually the two princesses of Russia at this time. So it's just at a very interesting point in Russia's history and I am I am so looking forward to starting this one. The next two books are a book in a duology um, so they are by Minette Walters and it is The Turn of Midnight and The Last Hours. So these are set in the 13th century. 14th century in England specifically in Dorsetshire and this one is following the story of the Black Death. I have sort of done a 180 flip on not wanting to read things about pandemics and um, plagues and whatnot to actually just really enjoying them because they become weirdly relatable and make the story better particularly when they're something that has previously been so far-fetched from my own life it makes these stories really like sing into the present for me so I'm actually really excited to read these. I'm really really keen to read more not read more, just read any, but also more of Minette Walters' works. I got uh, The Swift and the Harrier recently, which was her latest book, I believe. Um, and yeah, just can't get over how stunning this set is as a hardback. Couldn't believe my luck when they were on sale. So absolutely have picked them up. And this also is like falling nicely into like the part of English history that I am keen to read more on, that I keep talking about and I never do. But one day I will actually read these books, but yes, very excited to read these chunky boys. Okay, and this brings us on to the final home stretch for the books I have to show you this month. The first one is A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. I have actually started reading this already. I've read the first 50 pages. I've heard really good things and I'm particularly hyped because of a review by Reagan at Peru's Project who was talking about it in a recent wrap up. Um, love this cover so much. I don't believe that anyone will ever do a cover that is more exciting or beautiful or stunning or eye-catching than this one. I just, I could kiss it. It is beautiful. This is sort of a, um, Oh, what would you call it? Sort of like an epic fan, not an epic fantasy. It's a fantasy story. It's YA and it's about this island where there is magic. The island, I believe, is divided uh, in half with like political stuff that has been going on. But the main thing is that girls, young girls, keep going missing. And the main character who has been on the mainland away from the island because of stuff that has gone on has been recalled. And he is a bard. And I just think it's always fun when the bard is the main character. Um, and yeah, he's there to try and help figure things out. So I just think this one sounds really like 
whimsical and like dark and I feel like that is a really great combination. The next book I have to show you is one that's very exciting and that is the sequel to Terrier by Tamora Pierce. So that is Bloodhound. I went to a secondhand bookstore and saw this on the shelf and thought, oh my goodness, it's the right height, it matches my copy of Terrier. And if you've been playing along for a while, you'll know that Terrier is on my TBR for May as a challenge book because it is my oldest book on my TBR, the book I have had for the longest. And I thought, what better motivation than to pick up the sequel because I know I'm going to love Tomorrow Pierce. I have read other stuff by Tomorrow Pierce in the meantime. And so I'm really looking forward to continuing on this and just like super stoked to finish to get a matching like sequel to it now so yes I am keen to read this I still don't really know what this series is about but I just I just trust I trusted Tamora Pierce and I know it's going to be a good time. The next book is a similar story and I picked up Spyglass by Maria V. Snyder because I already have Stormglass and they are matchy matchy. I've always found these particularly ugly covers but the more I look at them and then having a matching set has sort of given me a newfound appreciation for them. They're just sort of they're old school aren't they? They're they're a uh, product of their time and I am obviously looking forward to reading this. We all know how much I love Maria V. Snyder and it's one of my challenges for 2022 is to read the rest of Maria V. Snyder's books on my TBR. It's something that gets pulled out of my challenge TBR jar so I thought it was only fitting that when I found a perfectly matching sequel for a book I have high hopes of reading at some point this year that it was needed and I needed to buy it so I did. That whole series is about magic, it's a like glassmaker turns magician or something along those lines and there's a clan that's been attacked and there's all this sort of magical intrigue. I just like your classic Mary of East Snyder plotline that you just can't go wrong with. The next book I was so excited to get and that is The Ranger's Apprentice book one, The Ruins of Ghoulan. I am trying to collect the full original set and the new set with this cover. I sort of have like half and half at the moment. I think I've got, actually it's not half and half, I've got the first eight books in the original covers which are super ugly but also really colourful on the shelf and then the last four and now the first one in this edition which is much much nicer but it's just black when it's on the shelf like this. So I saw this in secondhand bookstore and I just thought yes we're gonna commit to this and I'm gonna try and collect them all so this is just adding to a little collecting goal of mine and I'm very happy about it. If you haven't read Ranger's Apprentice then just go and read it because it's amazing. It is literally one of the best things that has ever been written and I love it so much. The next book I got was honestly such an impulse buy and it was the third book in the Simon Snow trilogy. So Anyway the Wind Blows by Rainbow Rowell. I actually hold the sequel I think at around January because I had done my sequel like order for the year in December and that had come in and I just jumped the gun and committed and bought the next one. I think it was on sale and I just thought what Whatever, I know I'm gonna love it. So this is the third book in that series and now I have the complete set and it is also really really floppy. So satisfying. And the final book I have to show you is one I'm super stoked and excited about and that is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. Now I've not read Stephanie Garber's other stuff but I know and I think she wrote Caravelle and everyone is just like way hyped about that series. So this will be a new to me author by reading Once Upon a Broken Heart. Everyone has just been saying how incredible it is and how much I need to read it so I am hoping that it won't be in the too distant future that I get to pick this one up but honestly with my TBRs who even knows. The tagline for this one is how far would you go for a happily ever after and it is about a character who's always believed in the happily ever after until she learns that the love of her life is about to marry another and her dreams are shattered etc etc. I, I don't even care. It's just I love the cover so much. I don't even need to know what this book is about but I have also heard and this good reviews from my friends. So I know that this is going to be a good time and I'm very excited about it. So these are all the books that I have acquired since we last chatted about a book haul. I am just very excited about all the various things on there. Going from the Australian fiction to the fairy loot that we talked about to the hardbacks that I got on special to completing some old series. It's all just happening this month. It's very exciting. It's also a very reasonable haul for me and I am proud of my efforts of not going totally overkill. I have no idea what my next book haul will bring as it is my birthday month in May. We're not going to hold our breath on anything but brace yourselves just in case. But let me know in the comments down below if you think I should bump any of these up my TBR and let me know if you've read them. Other than that I will see you in my next video. Goodbye. <laughs>